So we got that machines off over in uh, London, Grove City, I guess it was. And then they sent us over here about 20 miles over to Washington Courthouse to pick up a load going to Wal Walpole, Massachusetts, up to U-Haul. I delivered up there a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I guess it's been a couple months ago now. Time flies when you're having fun. That was back in um, March, I think. So we got over here and he's moving a trailer. I don't know if you can see that on the, the camera, maybe not. But that's what we're getting, whatever that stuff is. Probably stacked about that high, I'm guessing. And uh, once he gets that back, wherever he's out of the way, there's that, see that Dodge Ram pickup truck? We're backing into the door beside him. And once he's out of the way, I got that move where I can actually turn. I'm gonna make a big old U-turn in the driveway. Back into that door right there. So, that's what we got going on. This delivers on Friday, so I'm gonna have, today's Wednesday, so we get loaded today. We're gonna have the rest of the day to drive, which I'm gonna have about eight, probably like eight hours, seven and a half, eight hours of driving today. Maybe six hours of driving, something like that. I don't know. It's 800, 700 something miles up there. So, um, and then we'll have all day tomorrow, which is Thursday. And they got overnight parking up there in Walport, because I've delivered there before and overnight parked there before. So my goal is to get enough miles in today to where we can get up there tomorrow night and actually be at the place the night before and park every night and just be there. And not, not even start our clock in the morning because we'll be there. Get unloaded and uh, be good to go. So that's the plan anyway. The other thing is there's not a lot of parking up there. You get up in the Boston, Massachusetts area and you know, to start getting close to the place there isn't a whole lot in way of parking. So it's better to try to get a mouse ran out today to where we can get enough miles in today to where we can actually get there tomorrow night. Thursday night, yeah, tomorrow night. And be um, set up for a Friday morning delivery. So anyways. Go. I guess we're gonna go make a loop-de-loop -loop here and I'll back up a little bit. I was hoping that he's gonna back that completely into the door. That way I could actually um, use the whole parking lot to make my loop-de-loop -loop here. But, I guess not. Uh, make it a little bit tight, won't be too bad, I guess. I think that's what we're getting anyway. That's what every every trailer that I see is loaded with that. Whatever that stuff is, every trailer's got that on. So I'm guessing that's what we're getting. I don't know. They didn't say what we've actually got. So I don't know what we're getting. But I would assume that's what it is. I have no idea what that is. Anyways. It's going to be a little bit tight. Not really tight. It's going to be... When I first pulled in, I seen all these trailers. I was like, oh, it's gonna be a preloaded trailer. I mean, it was drop my trailer, hook up to the trailer, secure it, tarp it, and roll. And as I pulled in, I seen there was no melting trailers here. I'm like, yeah, probably not a pre trailer. Really. Considering that there's no melting trailers here. So. See, this is where I need my camera on the back. I took the mount down. I had a mount on the, up above my uh, chain box. I used to put a GoPro up there, but I took it down. And uh, this is where I need that camera now. I can have it 
the back view of it actually backing in. But no rear view cameras anymore. I never really used it anyways. We are loaded and rolling. Uh, it is, uh, what time is it? 11.45 now. It's 11.45. Tulsa time. It's 12.45 here. We're in Ohio. 12.45. Took me a minute or two to tarp and strap this. I put uh, four layer straps on this thing. I, I probably didn't need them, but the back layer was like five to six layers high. Four, six, yeah, I think six layers high. And then the front layer was four or five layers high. You probably would have been fine, but I put uh, two layer straps on each section. Um, at about three layers high. So that's how I did it. I didn't do any video or any pictures of, um, of what the load was. It's basically just plywood, painted plywood. It's U-Haul trailer sides. So they're building trailers and they're just putting the, 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 their wooden sides for the trailer. I guess they got like maybe some sheet metal on the outside or they put sheet metal on the outside or something. But at the end of the day, it's just a piece of painted plywood, is all it is. So. That's what we got going to, I think I've already said this, Walpole, Massachusetts. So here is what we're gonna expect for today. It's 12, 1 o'clock. I need to get about five hours, about 300 miles in today. So that would put me in Brookville, PA. A flying J in Brookville, PA. Conveniently enough, with 140 parking. So that's where our destination is. That's what we're going to try to get. The Flying J in Brookville, Pennsylvania. And that'll put us about 500 miles out. In one half mile, turn left. 505 miles out. Which I can do in an eight hour day on Thursday. So we can roll up, get to Brookville tonight, take a 10 hour break. Wake up tomorrow, roll out about 536. Eight hours later, about 334, we'll be there. Give or take. We might stop somewhere and take an hour lunch break or something. We don't need to be there at 3 o'clock. But that's what we got going on. Um, we're going to scale this thing because the paperwork says it's 46,000 and they got the most of the weight on the rear. My uh, gauge on my da dash so tells me that my drive axles aren't even close to being overweight. Probably like 27, 28,000 on the drives. Steers probably got like 11, 5, 11, 7. The only thing I'm worried about is the tandems. I don't think it's 46,000 pounds, but then I said that last time and it ended up being dead on the money. So last time I said it was probably only 38 and it ended up being 43. That's what the paperwork said it was. So we're going to find a scale somewhere. I don't know where we're going to find a scale at. We're going to find a scale somewhere, preferably within 50 miles, because there ain't nothing for about 65 miles. That's a little bit of a drive to have to come back and have something move. But, I don't know. But that's what we got. Um, we'll find a scale. We're gonna do a load check in the first 50. So there's a rest area, it looks like in about 40 miles. There's a goose standing in the middle of the road. Um, I think I might run him over. He better move his ass. Um, we'll get to that rest area, do a load check within the first 50, and hopefully, if we find a scale before then, uh, obviously we'll do our load check then. I'll get this thing scaled out. I'll show you guys a scale ticket. Like I said, I don't think it's 46, but I'm not good at guessing this stuff, so it could be. It shouldn't be overweight, though. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to get on, on up the road and uh, get on over to Brookville, PA. So on up 80 up through Ohio and up out across Pennsylvania on 80. Coffee, get ready to roll. 
And I didn't really even set up an alarm to wake up this morning. I didn't. I just woke up. It's like almost 7 o'clock. I'm up about 5, 5.30 in the morning. I don't need to be over there. Till, um, till after 5. But there was really no rush to get moving this morning. So, that's what we did. Uh, we ran the 300 miles over here to Brookfield. We got over here about uh, 6 o'clock maybe. I think it was after 6 when we got over here. I'm not even sure. It was like 300. I think it's 300 right on the money, or like 301 or something like that is what we ran. And uh, we um, got like 501 or 503 miles to go. I gotta fix my tarp. So let me spin around here. That black tarp right there where it drops down, see how it's high? Adjust my camera. See how it's high that it drops down low? It's ballooning out really bad right underneath that mountain. I'm gonna throw a couple bungees on that. See if I can fix that. I'm not sure why, it's, or maybe it's right here. Might be blooming out right here. Not up there where the mountain, but back here. I need to put some bungees up high, I think. I think it's blooming out there. So anyways, we got a fuel stop at about 165 miles. That'll put us 300 something miles out. We'll go over there and get fuel. We're gonna do a half hour break, but we probably can do like an hour break or something like that, I don't know. But that's about it. Um, and uh, yeah, we're ready to pull out of here and get on over to get some fuel. We'll get over to the shipper or the receiver at some point tonight after five, six o'clock, something like that. Shut down and be ready to unload first thing in the morning. That's the plan, anyways. Ah, so we made it over here to Walpole, Massachusetts. What a day, what a day. So we left this morning. Like I said, I wasn't going to leave early and I didn't. I didn't rot to almost seven o'clock. And in theory, <laughs> I should have been here at like 536. It's almost 745. So man, I got, we got up to um, Scranton, right around Scranton PM. I took, I thought I was going to take a longer half hour break. So I ended up staying there for like an hour and a half. Went in, there's a Petra there. Went into the iron skillet and got dinner. So, and I haven't eaten the Petra in a while. It's been over a year since I've ate at the Petra. That's some good food right there. The old iron skillet. And uh, that was a truck stop back when I first started driving. Back in 2007, I drove a van for a couple months when I first got my CDLs back in 2007. And uh, they used to go up 81 a lot for whatever reason. I used to stop by that, pot, uh, that Petra a lot. So, and I haven't stopped at that Petra in a long time. I think I've been there like once for sure. Maybe twice since I've been back with Mountain in a year and a half. Well, since I've been back in trucking. But when I first got in, man, I, was, I used to I used to be a regular stop for me at that uh, Petro. And I used to eat at that Iron Skittle a, a lot. So that was kind of cool to stop in there and spend a little bit of time there. But then I left there and we did good till then. We got up into Connecticut, man. That thing was a joke coming up into um, uh, Hartford. I probably lost uh, two hours of drive time. Traffic was just so bad. 15, 20 mile an hour for like 30, 40, 50 miles. Maybe not 50 miles, but like 30 miles. And then and once we got, before we got there, there was another hold up. It wasn't a wreck or anything, just crappy traffic. So I got been two like big traffic jams on the interstate there on uh, 84 and just wrecked my time. I, I got like a 10 hour day in today. So that's not what I wanted to do, but I definitely didn't want to stop short and have to drive in in the morning. So we drove here anyways. I think I'm going to end up with a 10 hour day today. And I wanted to only have like an eight and a half, maybe a nine hour day. We lost about an hour in traffic. But other than that, we got up here. It's a little bit cold up here, a little windy. Last time I was up here, I had a, a hell of a time trying to ruin my tarps. It was windy out and cold last time I was up here. And it's cold and windy again today. So we might have fun again tomorrow. I hope not. I hope it's not windy. I can deal with the cold, man. If it's windy out, trying to rule tarps in the wind is just a joke. <laughs> So that's what we got. We'll get the stuff off in the morning and uh, we'll go from there. I don't know if I'm going to get a load this weekend or not. I've passed four, three or four empty mountains coming out of Boston. So I don't know. I might not get a load tomorrow. I might be laid over in Boston all weekend. I don't know. But anyways, that's what we got. Like I said, we'll get this off in the morning and uh, we'll go from there, I guess.